Having covered the shrink wrap modifier, now let's take a look uh, at how we can utilize all this to create a three-dimensional printable body where, for example, we cut those parting lines out. The beauty of Blender, besides being free, is also it has a very nice interactive tool set, for example, for all those modifiers. But there can sometimes be a situation where that can also be problematic. And the situation I'm referring to is, for example, we have this car body. And I use this car body as a target for this geometry with its shrink wrap modifier to be projected onto it. Now for 3D printing, we want to cut these grooves out. So, you know, well, we could give uh, this no, shrink wrapped geometry a thickness and then simply cut it out of this object. So let's say we add a solidify modifier to give it some thickness. And I also set my, my unit system to metric uh, because I know like three millimeters material thickness is maximum I need. But I, I leave the thickness at one centimeter right now. So it's a little bit easier for you to see the different results. And for the solidify modifier, I set the offset to zero. This, for example, can just define which direction the surface grows and how far, for example, it sticks in. So currently I know one centimeter or 10 millimeters offset is zero. So five millimeters is roughly what those parts actually stick into uh, the shell. And I call those parting lines. Let's go to the car body. And for example, here, I type in parting lines and say, hey, cut the parting lines out. Turn on the eye so I see the result. And nothing happens. Let's go maybe to intersect. Everything is gone. So what's going on here? Well, the problem is simply we have kind of like a dependency loop or problem. So, uh, and it's very logical once you're aware of it. So as I said, we use this car as our target to project this mesh onto it and then the shrink wrap mesh then we give a thickness and then we tell this car well use now this thickened geometry to cut out of the car body but then the end result is a car body with this groove in and then the shrink wrap modifier wants to re-update to the new surface so the car body with those grooves and then try to shrink wrap this onto it so there's kind of like um, a circular dependency that simply doesn't work however the nice thing about blender um, being also for animation it has uh, lots of nice tools to work around those problems so for example i take this car shell And as I mentioned beginning of the semester, you never should really just work on one model or one design. You should save not only different versions, but maybe inside one file have different design stages. So you can explore different directions quickly and in case something goes wrong, you simply uh, can just backtrack without having to undo steps. And in this case, uh, instead of making a duplicate object, which just duplicates it, I make a linked object. And just for, for those who forgot what linked object actually means, so you see, for example, I call this one car body 3D print. And if I click there again, I can select the other object. For example, I call this one car body 
modeling. So those are two different objects, but because they are linked, they're linked to the mesh. So you see two. Each of those two objects, while they're two different objects, they all utilize the same mesh input. So this means if, for example, uh, in one object, I model a little bit, if I go to the other object, I see it there as well. So you see I'm clicking between the different objects and they're all the same actually. So they share the same data. So what's what's basically the, the point behind this? Well, this 3D print object, I move to layer five. So wait, so this is now my next step where I continue working on. Onto this object, for example, I would like to cut something out because, and that's the whole point behind it. This shrink wrap modifier is using my car body to project the mesh onto. So I use this basically for the shrink wrap to be folded over. And then I use the shrink wrap on this one to be cut out. So if I type in parting lines, takes a second and there everything is cut out and it works as expected. Um, well, not really, They're not union. I want to have difference. I want it to cut out, not add to it. And let's take a look. Yeah, there we are. Maybe turn on the matte cap so it's a little bit easier to see there. So that's basically um, a workaround how to still, for example, keep everything here interactive because I could, I could go ahead and for example, say, well, Maybe somewhere here, I would like something to be cut out as well. And you see that's projected onto there and I go to layer five, takes a moment to update. You see it's also cut out out of there. Now if I, for example, say, hey, this car body here, I would like this arc to be lower. So I can still, for example, work on my car body and have the those parting lines reprojected, but then utilize both elements onto a different layer, kind of like for my 3D print. So you see, I have bas I work basically on two different objects, but they, they share a certain geometry together. Okay, let me put this one back where it should be. And let's delete this. Okay. So it's all about trying to be interactive. So when you need to make design changes, you don't have to undo a lot. You just modify your parts and then regenerate your new results. So um, you see every time when I click on layer five, it's a little, there's a little delay. And that's because this is also a level four object. So to simplify the speed, I, for example, can type in two. The result is not going to look as pretty, but I roughly know how this actually looks like. So let's take a look at this part. So here I give the whole part another solidify modifier, set it to zero. This is called a wheel arc. And for example, I add another Boolean modifier. 
wheel arc intersect difference. Okay, so this one is cut out. And maybe with the level three, a little bit cleaner. Turn back on the other Boolean result. And there now, for example, we have kind of like the ring or the arc for the wheel cut out and for example the the sidelines as well so you see you do not have to to model all those as one part you can simply uh, in steps cut those parts out for example let's take a look at this thing here um, Maybe we can give it a small thickness as well. Let's call this one backlight. And maybe here I'm going to add another Boolean modifier. Backlight difference for example I build it in a way so it's so for example it is cut out and in case I would like like a parting line or profile line then I would have to do something different so for example this part I would have to duplicate I'm just going to move it onto a different layer and for example What I have to do now is I apply the mirror so I have a full object. Can apply the subsurface and I can apply the shrink wrap so it's actually nicely on it. And then I select my outer profile, so this outer edge. select everything else, delete it. So you see kind of like I have a nice high res profile line. And then this line I can, for example, extrude a little bit inwards, select the other part, move it slightly out, control N to fix the mirrors. And yeah, there might, there might be some issues down here, as you can see. There's some overlap, so maybe instead of shrinking inside, it should better expand. Maybe five millimeters for the thickness. Let's take a look how this looks at the car. Okay. And this is called backlight zero one. So here, backlight zero one. So this way now, you see I cut out the groove for maybe the lights. And I made those uh, those cuts actually really large. So for the screen, or for the not screen, for the presentation, you can see the, those lines much better. Otherwise, it can be difficult to spot them when they're really tiny. And then here you see I just added all the other uh, cuts as well. Okay, so this was basically an introduction into you know, how we can generate a geometry to cut parts out without having to apply everything because think about you print this one out and then because you printed it, you start noticing certain design parts you don't like, you would like to modify it. You don't want to have to redo or undo a lot you just want to have a very nice interactive workflow. So that's basically the reason why I work here with a, uh, not linked, yeah, um, a linked or clone object that shares that object mesh. 
No, because we would like to print something. Um, I have to to see how big actually my object is. So. My whole piece is three meters, so <laughs> a little bit too big. Um, so, of course, we have roughly the ability to print something that is 20 centimeters long. So let's take a look into what we can do here to make this printable. Um, so this was roughly three meters long. So let's say my target object that I can print is 20 centimeters, 20 centimeters. So this is kind of like uh, a cube the printer can print. I'm going to scale this one down. And I have to do this trick because uh, I built the car um, more a little bit to scale. Of course, now the 3D printer can't really print a car in full size, so I have to scale this object down. But um, I don't really want to necessarily scale everything. So what I'm trying to do now is if I, for example, scale this one up, and you notice that I, I had the, after I scaled the object, I applied the scale because now I can see the scale factor. So 15 times the piece has to be bigger. This means if my 3D printer has uh, a print thickness of maybe, let's say three millimeters, I have to multiply three, milli three millimeters by 15. So for example, ah, if you, three by 15, you get 45 millimeters. That's for example, the thickness I have to give this print in Blender, because then when we print it, I scale the whole object down by 15. So I end up with three millimeters for the print. So having that calculated, um, we can take a look into you know, how we can make the surface offset. And you noticed I uh, I turned everything else off because for the moment I just would like to fully only work on the solidify modifier. And you notice that I'm actually moving the solidify modifier above all the Boolean operations because what I want to do here is have everything thickened and then out of that volume I cut those grooves out. So. 45 millimeters, that's what I need. So 4.5 centimeters. And let me go into my model. There's one shell here. Actually, this one, I just delete for the moment because I don't really want it. And there's now the, the thickness, as you can see. Now, the, if you take a look in, in real life, if you, for example, have a hairdryer or something or a remote control and take it apart, the outside surface very often has nice round edges. And if you go into the inside, very often you start seeing that edges are actually crisp. And offsetting a surface to the inside is really difficult because the surface has to shrink and you deal with concave and convex compound curves. That's actually really a task. Plus when the object is inside only um, you you don't really see the surface so you don't really touch it which means you can actually ignore it to a certain degree it's not really very uh, important and with fusion for example if you make a shell you also see that in case the outside was a very crisp uh, fill it, the inside will look more like a straight edge. Because otherwise, technically speaking, there's no no way because the, the shell or the solidify command has to recreate like an offset 
surface of your object. And that's really a tough task for the software to figure out. So the problem you will encounter with the, the shell command, so the solidify command in Blender, is simply the problem of self-intersecting geometry. So you see this, for example, here. So this arc, for example, this arc here comes down, and then at this point, well, starts to self-intersect. When you work in Fusion, actually the shell command trims those parts off, while, for example, with a Polygon program, it is a little bit more less intelligent, so it, it just really offsets it to the inside or the outside, so it makes it grow or shrink. So you see when it grows, it works. However, when we make it shrink, it starts to intersect. Looks like a big problem is not really a major problem because there are certain things we maybe can try to address. So you see, for example, what happens if maybe I put the solidify modifier before the subsurface and then soften it. And you see actually most of that problem is already solved by simply having the subsurface last. Let's go maybe take a look at a different part of the object. Yeah, and looks like here as well. So, perfect. Let's take a look maybe here. It's, looks also okay. No, also because we want to print something, maybe in case somewhere a certain detail, for example, the edges here are sharp. Uh, if that's not really crucial for you, you can just leave it, print it, and then take sandpaper and sand the 3D print, and then you're done. So not really a big deal. Okay, so actually this was a really easy and simple fix. Fortunately, by just rearranging the the solidify and the subsurface. And the main reason was that the, the computer model right now is very, very simple. So the solidify modifier has less geometry to work with. And then the end result of the solidify modifier, we push over to the subsurface and start softening it out. And if we do it the other way around, so subsurface first, because, for example, I uh, creased those edges here. So you see, I have very small round corners and those round corners have to be, yeah, shrink down. So that's the reason why they self-intersect. So if, for example, I set this edge creasing to zero, also there, it works. So in this case, there was a problem because of the, the edge creasing. You can see the, the tighter I make the edge, the more the surface starts to self-intersect. So very much try to, to keep the solidify first and the modify last, and you really don't have to, to deal with that actually a lot. Okay, uh, let me quickly undo the edge creasing changes I did here. Okay. So this model, for example, actually is watertight. And then at this point, let's save, uh, should be able to add those different cuts. And yeah, so this is okay. Uh, you notice actually on this side, the cuts are not there because I think, yeah, 
those do not have a mirror modifier. And now you see, whoa, the problem is like, where do these things go to? Well, uh, very, very easy trick. I use maybe my uh, car body modeling as my center for the mirror axis. So my wheel actually, the object center is at the X and Y axis aligned. So I can use just its own object center but for example with my tape drawing the object center is down here and I don't necessarily want to move the object center to there I can then simply say hey use my my car body as the object to to mirror because my car body has its object center right at its own center it's basically the same as like using an empty for that yeah, let's go into edit mode and refresh everything. Yeah. Let's leave edit mode. Takes a little bit to calculate. And there it is. Perfect. So to, to print this, everything is basically modeled so that we can scale it down. Uh, all you have to do is For example, you want to go to File, User Preferences, Add-ons, and I'm just doing this in case those are not activated, 3D Print Toolbox. And then you can click on this empty check mark and put this check line in it. And then when you press T in 3D View, you will have this Print 3D box. So then you can, for example, select the object, um, click on this uh, folder icon. Let's maybe say red line. Yeah, that's kind of like where I would like it to be. And then you can select the format, but for 3D printing, you want to have STL. And there are some some other parts maybe to to look into to check if it's solid intersect or whatever uh, I'm not going to into detail here with this a lot um, because also the 3d printer the Z core is very forgiving so in case there are some mesh inaccuracies it's fine with it um, and because this will be the first printer you print on let's try to keep the meshing uh, as simple as possible Later, I will go more into the, the detail for this. And then you can simply press export. And it will, based on the complexity of your mesh, take a second. And for example, here it says exported the car body. Let's go to my object, uh, my folder, here is the red line folder, yeah, and there is the red line car. To, to double check if everything is really okay, I could maybe go to a new layer, go to file, import, STL, import, and this is now my, my print model. And actually, that looks complete. So this, for example, could be, we could send to, to the 3D printer. Yeah, so this basically covers um, the, the steps for how to, for example, when you have a shell, how to add thickness to it, and then how, for example, to, to cut certain parts out. Uh, let me show you one last step. You see, for example, here, there is kind of like uh, some craziness happening. So in case you would like to 
touched up designs a little bit more because the, the surface thickness command uh, works along the surface normal so the surface here grows into the path of my wheel we can also for example uh, where do I have it here take this wheel and I'm going to create just a very flat surface and then like in fusion I'm just simply trimming my my design and just cut it out so I clean up my my model a little bit maybe maybe like this let's see okay so then I have to maybe move this one to here uh, I set my 3d cursor extrude this one out move it over or oh, actually I just mirror it over so it's symmetrical smooth it control n to make sure the normals are all facing the same direction and there you can see for example how it would cut into this area and just trim the stuff off and for example this object i call front wheel cleanup let's save and just to quickly make everything a little bit faster, I'm just turning those Boolean modifiers off. Uh, unfortunately, actually, I wanted to have those turned on. Uh, add a Boolean modifier and front wheel cleanup. Difference. let's take a look and yeah so you see this is now much nicer cleaned up and in case we would print our wheel we could easily then stick it in and then at this point I I just go ahead and add my other parts so you see this is actually very similar also to the the way how the string works in Fusion, where you just generate a surface and then uh, remove geometry. And in, in Fusion or Alias or Rhino, it's just called trim. Uh, but technically speaking, the Boolean modifier works exactly the same way. So I have like an input surface, the wheel surface, the cylinder, and then everything that's inside the surface I remove so I have a nice clean cut okay so this basically covers everything for how to uh, how to work with blender with the different modifiers how to create details so you can draw onto a design how to create thickness to it then create thickness to your car body or your object and then cut those parts out or in case you have holes or something, or you need to clean up something, how to do this then with the Boolean modifiers in addition.